All right, welcome back, amazing hackers. Let's talk a little bit about JavaScript analysis, shall we? Because I think it's an important topic. Many different things can come from it, um, but how do you do it, right? Because sometimes you can just have this giant heap of JavaScript that's running in the background, and it might be really hard to have a look at it. So you might want to have a look at it while it's running, or there might be an, any other reason why you want to debug. Um, it's possible. We have this thing in Chrome. So if I go back and if I right click, I can inspect my page. And the first thing I'm going to see is the elements viewer. Now in here, I can select a certain piece of code and that's on my page an element and it's going to show me the source code behind that page. That's really useful because of course now I can see some things like this is executing a JavaScript function, right shifting. I can definitely use that in my console because sometimes you can have uh, JavaScript functions, which if you execute them, they might give a unexpected results, sometimes with even security implications like IDORs behind them. Because if it wouldn't be right shifting, but get invoice, then the invoice um, function took an identifier and it was able to view invoice details that I shouldn't be able to see. That would definitely constitute for an IDOR as well. Now, right now I can do that right shifting function. And if I execute it, as you guys see, nothing happens. Now I have a debug point in here as well, but we'll get more into that later. Nothing really happens because I haven't given it how many positions it should shift yet. And while I do that, you can see, you can kind of start guessing, oh, this is, if I give it two, it's going to shift the letters by two positions every single time. So if I give it one, it's going to shift it by one. As you can see right here, it's going to put that last T first and it's going to put all the other letters to the right. So that can already help in determining what a JavaScript function is supposed to do, but it's not the whole story, of course. And you guys already saw that as I was typing, it's going to predict what's going to happen and it's going to actually show you the output of that JavaScript function already before I even press enter. It can be very useful if you're typing. It's going to uh, refresh that output as you're typing. So that's definitely something useful there. Now, what I want you to do in this challenge is to actually um, execute this secret call. And as you can see, it doesn't say, um, it says the password should be cheese. So I will not disappoint it. And there we go. That password is correct. Now, <clears throat> this is JavaScript password checker. You're never going to encounter that because your JavaScript is going to be running locally. And I hope you never are because otherwise that might, might be an entire other issue in and of itself. Um, we also have the sources tab and in here I can find the JavaScript that is running on this page. Now I can put my debug point here by just clicking on here. And if I do that, if I then go into that function, it's going to stop at my debug point. And I can, for example, look at the variables and their values. This is very important. It also shows you the scope of those variables and you can actually see the call stack that's happening. Now in here, there is no call stack. This is being directly called. But as you can see, I can also step over to go into the next thing, blah, blah, blah. I can use any of my debugger um, functionality that I'm used to. I can continue right now. So that gives me some output. There we go. And I'm going to land right back in here because at the end of this JavaScript file, this function is being called. So I'm going to continue for now. And then I'm going to put a breakpoint in here as well because I want to click the second link and then I can see that I'm going to actually execute the left shifting function this time. So I'm going to put a breakpoint in there before I go in there, which is something I can dynamically do. And I can let it run through the next breakpoint, which is going to do right here. And then I can see the call stack that's actually happening. This function got called from this function. This can be very useful if you're 12 functions deep because you can also click back. Very useful because functions can be spread over multiple files if you're doing JavaScript uh, chunking um, and other tricks might apply. 
So that's it for the debugger, really useful. There are some other tricks, I'm sure, but I wanted to keep it surface level for now. Um, so we'll let this run. And then what I want to do is, uh, whenever I have my developer console open, it doesn't matter on what tab, if I click this one, this link here, the last one, it's going to open the debugger immediately almost and this is happening because I have obfuscated my JavaScript and I've hidden a debugger statement in there that keeps getting called over and over and over again. JavaScript obfuscation is a way of making it, make it much harder for a human to read the JavaScript file but for a computer to be perfectly able to handle that JavaScript file. Now, what you can do in this case, for example, is run your JavaScript file locally, try to remove that debugger, um, but we'll get more into that later on. I just wanted to show you this can happen and what obfuscated JavaScript means. It's going to be a lot harder to find 10 because as you can see, if I pretty print this even, this is gonna be, what the heck is this? And if you look at this, all this really is, is a function high with logs to the console Hi, that's all it is. So if I go to the console right here and I press this high function, if I want to execute it, let me type in my parentheses there. It's not gonna do anything in this case because I've disabled console output. So that means it says not defined. There's not gonna be anything happening in here. Um, it doesn't even find this function. This is because, once again, disabling console output can do that in JavaScript obfuscation. And as you can see, it can be quite hard to read this, so it would be useful to debug this. So that's why it can be useful to remove that debugger statement. But good luck finding it in this jumbled mess. It's not just going to say debugger, and it's going to be hidden in multiple places even. So. That's it on JavaScript analysis for now. If you combine that with the other JavaScript analysis lessons, then you should realize that it can be a very valuable tool, which you should definitely not be afraid to look into. It can be quite intimidating, but it's only JavaScript. I mean, it's not like uh, this is your, your graduation exam. Um, <laughs> I found it much harder to, on my exams, do um, like moths, for example. This, that I found that extremely hard, um, but this, this is a lot easier. So it can be a lot harder as well, by the way, don't get me wrong. Um, what, what I'm trying to say is don't get scared away by this. It might seem a little bit intimidating at first, but you really shouldn't be intimidated. It's just going to keep a lot it's just going to require you to dig a lot. Like if you see all of these different arrays that it's creating, all of these different arrays which contain strings, like this one right here, it's calling things from that array. So you'll have to, um, you'll have to see where that array gets called, which values get called. And I can even make this a lot harder to, to actually get around to. So that's a little bit about JavaScript analysis. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next lesson.